Samantha? Hey, are you there? Answer me. Samantha, I need to talk to you. Who are you? What took you so long? Why don't you reply to my message? Sorry, I couldn't answer you sooner. I was giving my son a bath. What? That could have waited. Not responding to someone right away is a good way to lose friends, you know. And that is also an act of disrespect for others. Okay. Anyway, but do I know you? How can you say that? Of course you do. It's a bit disheartening that you don't recognize me, considering we're also quite close. Hmm, I don't think so. Come on. I'm Anna's mom, and she's in the same class as your son at preschool. Oh, I remember. You're Isabel. Okay, Anna's mom. Why are you texting me? Do you need something? Yeah, I do. I heard you guys are going on a family vacation soon, right? Um, no. We don't have any vacation planned. What are you talking about? Come on. You're not going to trick me that easily. I'm not trying to trick anyone. We don't have any sort of vacation planned. Who told you so? I think you must have misheard or gotten the names mixed up or something. Not at all. I know they were talking about your family. One of the other moms from the preschool told me specifically that it was your family. And you'll take them with you on vacation too. I know I'm not wrong. Don't lie to me. What? Well, I don't know what to tell you. We haven't planned any vacations. We don't have any vacations. There is no time for anything like that right now. Come on, just tell me. Where's a big vacation this year? I told you. We're not going on a vacation. Can you stop with this nonsense, please? Hmm, still lying to me. It seems you're not going to tell me no matter what I say, huh? Well, it's a little hard for me to tell you about something that doesn't exist, don't you think? And I'm not lying. I keep telling you we're not going on a vacation. If you're not going to tell me, I'll just have to find out another way. And when I do, I'm going to make you take my entire family with you. What? Your whole family? Do you mean, like, four children or something? N not just them, but my husband and I, and my parents and my brother, and his wife as well. What? Ten extra people? Well, no. My brother has five kids as well. Fifteen extra people? That's right. With that many people, it's really hard to plan a vacation ourselves. But... If we all tag along with you guys, everything's pretty much already planned, right? I don't know why you think our family vacation would ever include your entire family as well. But we aren't going on a vacation, so this whole conversation is pointless. Look, I know your husband makes really good money. He's a department head, so he definitely makes a lot of money. How did you know that? I know everything. Anyway, if you guys have no problem paying for us as well, I bet you'll probably even get a pretty good group discount too. I can't believe that thought would even cross our mind. I'll tell you what, if you tell me when and where you're going, I won't invite my parents or my brother's family, okay? It will be just me, my husband, and our four kids tagging along. Since there's no vacation planned, I can't give you a date or place. So whatever you say, it's not gonna happen. Even though I was kind enough to reduce the number of people from 15 to 6, you still won't tell me? Fine. If that's how it's going to be, I have a lot of connections. I'll find out what I need. Don't think I won't. At this point, I don't even care if you believe me or not. Hi, Samantha. So I guess you're heading out the day after tomorrow, huh? Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah, I can't believe it. Time really flies. 
in just a few days from now, I'm going to be in a totally different place. It's going to be quite a shock for me. It's going to feel so different. I'm trying to imagine it, but I can't. I'm not sure if I can adjust to the new environment. I know what you mean. But don't worry. Hawaii is a resort paradise. It boasts fantastic weather, gorgeous beaches, delicious food, and, to top it all off, lovely and friendly people. I bet you're going to love it there soon. You're right. I think I'll enjoy it as an extended vacation. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. A couple of other moms from the preschool want to come to see you off. Is it okay if we all come to the airport with you? You guys are going to come all the way just to see us off? Well, my daughter really likes little Jonathan. And a couple of the other kids from the daycare want to say goodbye to him too. We all want to see you one last time before you leave. So we figured we'd go to the airport with you. We were thinking we could make it kind of like a girl's day out too. After we say goodbye to you at the airport, the rest of us will go out shopping and grab some dinner or something. If you think all of us going to the airport will be an issue, I'll tell them not to come and it'll just be me and my daughter. No, no, it's a great idea. We'd love it if you came to the airport with us. Jonathan will be really happy to see his friends again. And so will I. Okay, we'll do it. What time are you flying out? The flight's at 2.30 p.m., but we've got to be there really early. My husband hasn't decided if he wants to grab lunch at the airport. To be sure we're there on time, or eat lunch before we go, I'll tell him what you guys are planning and get back to you. Okay. Let me know soon so I can tell the others. No problem. Thanks, Elizabeth. Hi, Samantha. Guess what? What? I don't have time for this. Sorry, but I went to Miami a little ahead of you. Huh? Why did you go to Miami? A couple of days ago. I found out what time you were going to the airport, and I kind of guessed what time your flight would leave. There were no available seats on the afternoon flight to Miami, so we managed to get on an earlier morning one. I guess not many people like to fly that early, which worked out well for us because I was able to book all 15 tickets. My entire family is here in Miami now. All 15 of us. We've just picked up our luggage and are all set to enjoy Miami. I also heard you're staying at the Cranston Hotel. That is a pretty fancy place. I know you guys are rich. You can't run from me. Uh, Isabel. Hold on. I've got something I have to tell you before I forget. You're going to have to pay for the 15 plane tickets and all of our rooms at the hotel. Okay. I've already paid for the plane tickets, but I need you to pay us back for that right away. It cost nearly $5,000 to get us all here, and that was the cheapest we could get. I used all the money I had and maxed out my credit card to get us all here. I only have $10 left. That means I'll need you to reimburse me as soon as we meet up. If you need to. Withdraw some cash at the airport. Oh, and don't forget about our hotel rooms. But you can use your credit card for those, so that shouldn't be a problem for you. We want comfortable rooms as well. We'll need at least four double rooms. Actually, make it five because John will never share a bed with his brother. Isabel, can you stop typing and listen to me for a second? Of course. But five rooms at about $195 a night per room. And for five nights. I'm not good at math, but I'm sure your husband can handle it. Isabel, what were you thinking? I don't know why you think my family is going on vacation in Miami. We're moving to Hawaii. What? Hawaii? We're catching a plane to Hawaii in just a few hours from now. What? Why are you going to Hawaii? Don't tell me you thought this was our family vacation or something, did you? Well, yes, of course. But I told you before, we're not going on any family vacation. What you're saying is, you're moving to Hawaii, you're not taking a vacation to Miami? That's right. 
My family is going to be leaving in Hawaii starting today. Why did you think we were taking a vacation to Miami? I never told anyone that. But I heard Elizabeth's daughter, Gabriel, said so. She said Jonathan was going to Miami and staying at the Cranston Hotel. That's what she told my daughter at preschool. You heard that from Gabriel? And you think I'm going on vacation to Miami? Well, my daughter did. Gabriel even told her that they were going to see you guys at the airport. That's how I knew when you were leaving. I assumed their family was going with you and you were trying to ditch me. You know Gabriel is only four years old, right? You have to know that she's the same age as your youngest daughter. What's that got to do with anything? Was this all just a big plan to screw me over or something? Elizabeth and Gabriel are here right now. I just asked them about this. What happened was when Elizabeth showed Gabriel a picture of where Jonathan's moving to, she saw a beautiful beach and thought it was the same place they went on vacation last year. Miami Beach. What? That can't be true! Come on. She's only four. Give her a break. She doesn't know a lot about the world. Her mom had to explain it to her in detail. That Jonathan isn't going to Miami. And that this isn't a vacation for us. When you ask her, she must have still thought my family was going to Miami Beach. I can't believe this. I don't understand. Why would you rely on what one four-year-old told another four-year-old without confirming it with an adult? Spending a lot of money and raising halfway across the country based on that. Seriously? What is wrong with you? That's because my daughter sounded so sure. And why the heck are you moving to Hawaii? This is the first time I've ever heard of that. Why didn't you tell me? What? Why do I have to tell you that? It's not something I felt I needed to tell you. Why the heck not? Isabella, I mean our children are in the same class at preschool. But we don't speak outside of greeting each other when we pick up or drop off our kids. We're not friends. We've never even had lunch together or even gone out for a coffee together. Huh? You think we're not friends? I didn't want people making a big deal out of us moving away. So I only told my close friends, which means Elizabeth and some others. A couple of them happen to have children at the same preschool. But that doesn't mean automatically include you. In fact, I told them to try to keep it a secret and not to bring it up unless specifically asked. Why would you be so mean to me? How cruel! How dare you treat me like this? I can't believe you! Treat you like what? I'm the one who can't believe you. What did I do? I told you a thousand times that my family wasn't going on vacation. I have no reason to tell everyone I meet that I'm moving to Hawaii. And you're the one who jumped to conclusions, thinking I was going on some extravagant trip. When you asked me about it, I made it clear we weren't planning such a thing. But you refused to listen to me. On top of all that, you went ahead and flew our whole family to Miami, even though I explicitly said we weren't vacationing. Don't try to blame your ignorance on me. This is all on you. You're lying. If that's true, then what's with all this talk about you guys staying at the Cranston Hotel, huh? You're on vacation and I know it. You're getting it wrong again. I don't think so. Oh. I see how it is. You don't want to pay for my family's hotel rooms. So, you're lying about this whole thing, aren't you? You're so selfish. You make me sick. What the heck? We are staying at the Cranston Hotel in Hawaii. What? The house they're preparing for us in Hawaii won't be ready for another two weeks. But my husband has to start work there on Monday morning. So his company is paying for us to stay at a hotel until our house is ready. His company is paying for your hotel? This is all for your husband's job? Exactly. 
That's why we had to move. My husband was transferred to Hawaii. This is a great opportunity for him, and he's going to be there for a long time. So he decided we'd all move there instead of him being gone all the time. I don't feel I need to be explaining any of this to you though. I barely know you. Then what about all the money I spent to get us all here to Miami? What about it? I've got 15 people here in Miami. And we don't even have a hotel booked for the night. This is your fault. Don't you feel sorry for us at all? Why? Is this my fault? If you don't have a hotel booked, I suggest you start looking for a hotel or just go home. We can't fly back now, and my credit cards are maxed. And nobody else you took with you has a credit card or cash? We're not a rich family, and I told them you'd be paying for everything. I've only got $10 in my wallet. Wait a minute. Between the 15 of us, we've only got about $300 cash. It won't even cover one meal at a restaurant for 13 of us, or a single night in a hotel. Oh my god! Are you serious? Yes! No. I mean, seriously? You genuinely believe that my family, just the three of us, were embarking on a family vacation. And that if you crashed our getaway with an additional 15 people, we'd foot the bill for all your expenses. Are you out of your mind? We don't even like you! Samantha! What? I can't believe you said that. I really don't get it, Isabel. Why would you think someone who won't even go out for a coffee with you would take your entire family on all expenses paid trip without even agreeing to do so ahead of time? And you thought I'd just hand you $5,000 in cash when we meet up? If we had that kind of money, we'd be taking a private jet, not flying economy class. Did nobody in your family question your plan? Did none of those other 14 people think what you were saying was crazy? Well... I didn't think people as stupid as you do existed. But Samantha, I only have $10 to my name right now. I have four kids. What am I gonna do? Why asking me? I don't care. Ask your parents or your brother about that. Your situation has nothing to do with me. The only reason I'm still talking to you about this is because three other moms who don't like you from the preschool are here. You can't stop laughing at your stupidity. No way. This is horrible. You're right. You've caused a real mess all because of your crazy delusions. But I think we're out of time. I've got to get my family to the gate. Goodbye. No, don't go yet. You really are annoying, you know that? Wait, don't go. I need your help. How can I solve this on my own? None of my business. I am blocking your number. My family hopped in a plane, bound for Hawaii, to kick off our new life. We now reside in a stunning house, surrounded by breathtaking scenery, and we're absolutely loving it here. I had a chat with Elizabeth and learned about Samantha's misadventure. It turns out they were stranded at the airport for an entire day and night before heading back home the following day. The news about her attempt to secure a free vacation for 13 people spread like wildfire, and people couldn't believe it. However, I had made sure to share the text chat as evidence with the other preschool moms. So there was no denying what had transpired. Apparently, just a week after the incident, Samantha withdrew her daughter from the preschool. Probably due to sheer embarrassment. But before all this, many families had reported her and her family showing up uninvited to parties and gatherings, consuming everything and never contributing. This time, Samantha's antics went too far leaving her with a substantial debt she couldn't wriggle out of. Hi, Zoe. Do you have a second? Your brother and I have something to tell you. Hey, Tracy. Of course. What is it? Alex and I are having a baby. I'm five months pregnant now. What? Oh my gosh, congratulations! 
We better throw a baby shower soon, then. Oh, we're fine. Thank you. I'm sure we'd be better off planning and celebrating for ourselves than leaving it to you. Um, I'm sorry, what? I didn't reach out to you just to let you know that I was pregnant. I actually had a very important favor to ask of you. Once the baby in my belly is born, I'd like to ask you to never show yourself in front of us again. I need to make sure that our child doesn't grow up seeing you as a role model. <laughs> Are you serious? So, you're suggesting that we stop being a family? Yes. I'm never gonna see the two of you or the baby? Exactly. I'm sorry. It's been very difficult being around a high school graduate lowlife myself. And it's even more out of the question to be forcing my own child to be around one. So I'll be maintaining a good distance with you from now on. I cannot let my child be exposed to uneducated people like you when he is born. Alex and I both studied at prestigious schools, and so will my children. Pack your things and get out of the house as soon as possible. I don't want your stupid energy to affect my family. <sighs> wow. Just... Wow. But I'm not as uneducated as you think. Um, whatever. You left to export labor for many years and then suddenly returned. Neither Alex nor I are looking forward to your return. What? It's true that I went to work abroad to earn money to pay my family's debt, but then everything changed. Your ignorance never changes. And before you even ask, yes, Alex 100% agrees with this. You know, I would even go as far as to say that he was the one who came up with the whole idea in the first place. That we should distance ourselves from you since you're a high school graduate. I'm glad that the two of us have felt the same way about this matter. You two have always treated me like this. You know that I wanted to go to college too. I had no choice but to start work because that's what our family needed. The company that your parents were running went out of business, right? I've heard that you were all struggling to get by for a while. Our parents were able to find different jobs after that and worked for years. That's the only reason why Alex was able to go to college, unlike me. Are you still going to make fun of me while knowing all that? I mean, I do feel bad for you. But then again, a high school graduate is a high school graduate. And that's that. Society won't take into account why your educational background is the way it is. Seriously? Through my educated eyes, you people are all the same. And it hurts my eyes when I have to watch you. Uneducated people make all of these excuses as to why you were unable to get a proper education. It really brings out your lack of dignity. Why is it that the worse the educational background, the more excuses people have? I would never make an excuse if I was in your shoes. So what you're trying to say is, regardless of what I say, the words that come out of my mouth are still those of a high school graduate. So you don't care. <laughs> Whatever. I get what you're trying to tell me. If that's what you want, then I won't show myself in front of the two of you ever again after your child is born. I was scared that you wouldn't understand me. So I'm glad you do. I'll be headed then. Goodbye. Hey, Zoe, what's up? Guess who I am? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I have no idea. It's me. Your super great, great brother. <laughs> it's Alex? Yes, it's me. OMG, how have you been? I bet you are trying to hide in some corner and struggle to live day by day. <laughs> Why did you text me all of a sudden? I thought you and your wife never wanted to see me again. That's right. How could I meet an uneducated person like you? I now live in an apartment in the middle of the city inside a skyscraper. I am officially on top of the world. You know, Tracy and I's total annual income has just exceeded $200,000. Ha 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 ha! It sounds like a dream, even to me. Well, that's great. So what? And we have a beautiful and sweet daughter who studies really well as her parents. She is studying at a prestigious school located on the campus of the apartment building where we live. I bet you've never heard of the name. 
It's Lancaster Catholic School. Someone like you can definitely never step foot in there. <laughs> Sorry, it's Lancaster Catholic Academy? Oh my goodness. Someone like you also knows about that school? Wow, wow. It proves that the school my daughter is studying is extremely famous. Yeah, I read that the location at which you live significantly affects the child's educational outcome. I mean, you can see that it's true for me and Tracy. We both grew up in the city, and now we're both graduates from prestigious universities and work at mega companies. I'm sure our child is going to turn out as bright as the two of us, so we'd better make sure that their environment doesn't drag them down. I agree. I think it's important for a parent to prioritize education. I've also read that the location of the child growing up greatly affects their drive towards achieving well in school. Exactly. I mean, it's common sense that if you live with idiots, then you'll become one yourself. And in order to avoid that from happening, Tracy and I are raising our child in the best and brightest environment that we can provide. That's great. Yeah, it's the type of place that someone with an educational background like you could only dream of. I've heard rumors of celebrities living there, and apparently it even houses CEOs and managers from all kinds of big companies. That's why the school that's built nearby is one of the best in the state. Wow. The rent must be really expensive. Yeah, the room itself is also really luxurious too. It's pretty spacious and it has a great view. Sorry to show off like this. But I'm sure you can live somewhere like this. If you can go ahead and graduate from college, it probably isn't too late. I don't care. I'm already satisfied with my life and my happy little family. So stop bothering me. What? You got married? I can't believe it. What kind of person dares to marry you? Surely he is also an ignorant, uneducated, and worthless person. It is impossible to imagine an entire family being uneducated. Stop saying those kinds of words. It's been seven years and you're still so rude to me. I just say the truth. I don't want to hear anything from your dirty mouth. Goodbye. Hello, Zoe. I heard Alex say that you are married and have a family, right? Who are you? It's your sister-in-law, Tracy. Why are you contacting me? Just want to know, are you married? I just went to school to pick up Aurora, my daughter. I met someone very similar to you who was with the principal. I just want to confirm that I was mistaken. Lancaster Catholic Academy. Wait, what? How do you know? So, yes, it's me. You're not mistaken. What? What the hell are you talking about? It's impossible! Don't be too delusional, girl! If you just want confirmation, then yes, it is me. I'm with my husband and we're picking up our son, Arthur. Do you have any questions? What? Are you kidding me? Your husband is the principal of Lancaster Catholic, your husband? Yes, that's right. You're lying. Are you lying because you're so jealous of our life? Why should I lie? I've been married for six years to Lewis. Principal of Lancaster Catholic Academy, I have no reason to lie about my family. No, no way. That's not true. You're lying. How could an uneducated person like you marry such a prestigious person? Surely you are fooling me. I've told you many times, I'm not as uneducated as you say. While working abroad to earn money to help my parents, I met Lewis's family. His mother loved me very much and she sponsored my tuition. I got my university degree in Russia with Lewis, and then we hooked up and got married right after you and Alex kicked me out. He and his mother treated me very well, even though I used to have nothing. No, you are making up stories to deceive me. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> Thanks to the great support from Lewis's family, my husband and I have tried very hard to achieve success today. Lewis was the school principal. And what's more, we own several buildings. Wait. Building? What do you mean? Exactly. More precisely, Lewis and I are both owners of the building you're in. 
You and Alex both have to pay me rent every month. I get that you're mad, but making obvious lies doesn't help your situation, honey. Whether you believe it or not, I own this building, and that's all there is to it. The room that you showed me as if you own the whole world. That room is mine, and you're paying me to live in it. If you don't believe me, come on over to the top floor. You'll see. The whole floor is my house. The whole top floor? <laughs> you two look so dumb. When you were telling me that I'd never live in such a nice place. Every cent that you spend to live here comes to me, for God's sake. Are you kidding? How is that possible? You're lying to feel better about yourself, aren't you? You can even look at the papers you signed to finalize the moving in process. You'll see that the room is under my name or my husband's name. Really? Look, I don't care what you want to believe, but if you're going to keep trying to believe that I'm lying, then take a look at it and then bother me. I'll be going then. I'm still furious at the two of you. Zoe answered the phone right now. How on earth did you end up owning a building like this? This is impossible. Looks like you finally took a proper look at the papers. How did you not notice anything when you were signing them, for God's sakes? Even if they had the same name as you, I never thought it would be you. I just thought you had the same name as the owner, by coincidence. I mean, who would think that? You're supposed to be a poor lowlife. Yes, I would be a poor lowlife if I hadn't worked as hard as I did. What? No matter how much the two of you would harass me, I stayed focused on my work and brought myself to this position. After paying off our parents' debt, I received support from my boyfriend Lewis's family. I've tried my best to study and achieved many excellent achievements. Then, as soon as you kicked me out of the house, I began the journey of building the career I have today. Why did Lewis's family agree to help you? This is ridiculous. Oh, Lewis's mother is a woman who only completed high school. Uneducated, as you guys say. I accidentally met her and became a caretaker next to her. She treated me like her own daughter. She sponsored my tuition to continue studying at the university. And I ended up marrying her son, Lewis who is also the principal of the school where his daughter was studying. What kind of fairy tale scenario is that? This is one of the many buildings and apartments that she left behind for Lewis and me. What the hell? All you had to do was take care of some rich old lady for a few years. And you got all of that? That's not supposed to happen in real life. Mm-hmm. She only finished high school and then was insulted by her friends and colleagues the same way you and Tracy insulted me. But I was luckier because I got to meet her. No matter what the odds or what anyone else said to her, she kept working towards her goals. In the end, she became the queen of real estate in this area. I mean, she was rich enough to hire a personal caretaker, so that says a lot about her wealth. I earned tons and gained a lot of inspiration in the last few years that I was by her side. But why on earth would you hide all that from me? Neither mom nor dad know that you have this much wealth, do they? Of course mom and dad knew everything about this. They were the first people that I told. Really? <laughs> yeah, I even suggested that they start living with me, but they said they would pass up on the offer. But they were glad I was happy in that. And they wanted me to live my own since they took so much away from me when I was young. Then why didn't you tell me too? Why did you think that I would even think about telling you? Do you not remember how many times you made fun of me for not having gone to college? I'm not bored enough to deal with you. Anyways, when are you planning to leave your apartment? I hope you're already beginning to pack your things up. What do you mean? Why would we move out? We just moved here. I'm supposed to be the successful one out of the two of us. But even if it's below you, this room is still something that I worked hard to earn. And I paid tons of initial fees. I just can't move out right away. I even invited some friends to come check it out. I can't back out now. <sighs> Whatever. I don't care whether you keep living here or move out. It's the owner of your room. The only thing I care about is that you pay me your rent. Well, then it's good doing business with you. Zoe, it's Tracy. Are you free right now? I need your help. 
Help what? Can you tell your husband to waive Aurora's tuition? Is that even a real question? I never do that. Come on, Zoe. Aren't we sisters? I'm sure you could work something out for us. Please. How many personalities do you have? Do you think I'm just gonna forget about the evil stepsister who harassed me for years? I finally had an epiphany. It's just wrong and stupid to make fun of people for their educational background. You couldn't possibly measure a person's worth with such a superficial trait. I'll apologize for every single thing I've done and said that offended you. So let's start over as besties. Seriously? Yes. Aren't you glad to finally have the loving little sister that you always wanted? We should go and have some tea together sometime. You're so bored. Then why don't you just go get a proper job? I'm sure your college degree would get you a decent job. Maybe you'll finally be able to quit your part-time job. What? Uh, I hate to break it to you, but I know everything about you too. As the owner, I have the right to check your annual income. You two have been telling me that you are a lead who works for mega companies. $200,000 a year? <laughs> Why the hell would you lie about that? I know that you two only make $60,000 a year combined and you only have a part-time job. How? Where did you find out? I found out when the two of you tried to move in. I heard that the real estate company declined. The two of you because of your annual salaries. And that you two were making excuses that you'd just been fired recently. And that you'd been making $200,000 a year until last year. Mark promised that he would be promoted and would make as much as he used to right away, right? And that you'd get a proper job as soon as you could. How do you know the exact lines of our conversation? You even showed them your student IDs from college, right? Do you really think student IDs from years ago mean anything at all in the real world? How? The real estate agency contacted me right away and I said, you can move in since it's all up to me in the end. All because I cut you some slack as your older sister. Really? But what do you do in return? Try to negotiate prices and pay less. I don't think I've ever met anyone as greedy as you. If you have time to negotiate prices with me, then why don't you find a job? As you promised, go ahead and show that you're an elite. Of course. That's exactly what I'm planning on doing. It's just that I'm pregnant right now. And I heard that Alex isn't doing too well at his workplace either. Look. I don't care about the reason why you two ended up getting fired from your previous jobs, but you better keep every single promise that you made at the office. If you even make one delayed payment, you're out. Isn't that a bit harsh? I think it's great that you two care enough about your child to move in just to give them a good learning environment, but biting off more than you can chew is never a good idea. Tuition will increase gradually every year, and currently, you cannot pay Aurora's tuition. Lewis said that there will soon be a decision to drop Aurora from school if her parents can't pay her tuition. What? Will tuition continue to increase? Will Aurora be expelled from school? No way! Um, did you not look up the living expenses around here before moving in? I mean, we just thought that living in the city would be enough. Breathing the same air and seeing the same sights as smart people is important. And raising a smart child, right? Living in a nice environment won't automatically make your kids smarter. Isn't that common sense? I think the two of you should have a nice long talk about the future. Compare your income with the living expenses around here and come back to me with an answer. Because things won't go your way just because you went to a nice university. I later discovered that the reason the two of them were fired in the first place was simply because they were poor at their jobs. They would go around harassing people who didn't do as well in school as them, but also didn't do as much work, and ended up getting fired after one conversation. They both accurately compared their income with their expenses and told me that weekend that they were giving up their dream apartment. Then I heard they were forced to move into a cheaper apartment. Tracy still regularly bombards me with messages asking for money. But I ignore it and continue with my life. My family is increasingly happier. Even if we sometimes quarrel. But just over small things. Lewis continues to manage the school, and I help him manage the building. Life is peaceful day by day. <laughs>